Hey guys, how's it going out there? And welcome to a very special episode of uh, my show. Today, I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a new format, a bit of a podcast type format. I'm going to be talking with my friend Spence. Some of you guys know him out there, some of you guys don't. But regardless, uh, we're just going to be shooting the shit for a little while. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the show. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce you guys a little bit to Spence and uh, we can go from there. How's it going, Spence? All good. All good. It's uh, 11 o'clock p.m. in Europe, so it's, uh, it was, it's a pretty late at night and, uh, you know, just finished a pretty long shift at work and just trying to get a few hours in, put some, put some words out there and talk to a few people, hopefully we can talk about some interest and stuff and uh, get some good ideas out there. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh, five. It's almost five. Oh, it's five twenty here. It's five twenty p.m. Uh, and it's over there. You said it's eleven twenty p.m. Right? Eleven twenty. Yeah. So. Nice, nice. Okay, so there we go. So we got two people on uh, from two separate parts of the world, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so I, I'm currently in the UK, but I travel around a lot. So uh, depending on. What day it is and what time of year could be in uh, the UK or uh, somewhere in Europe or Australia or wherever. So we'll see. We'll see what the uh, the time zones can go from from here, I guess. So, uh, hi, hi, um, so you excited to to just be out here talking to the world wide web, the whole internet? You know, like you got like at least you know two people listening to you out there right now. Yeah. There's at least two people got, watching this shit. At least two people. At least well. Me included, so there's at least one individual out there, which is probably uh, <laughs> not not one of us. But uh, no. yeah, I mean, uh, it's the first time I've done anything like this. Yeah, the two people yeah. watching is just you and me, man, and again, not even our moms want to watch us, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, even mean, Lambo, even know. Lambo, like as soon as he found out we were gonna be doing this, he's like, all right, I'm out of here, man. Fuck this shit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those. I, I've never put out content like. Uh, published it like publicly or anything like that. I've, I've wrote papers and uh, published uh, things before under under different names and things. But uh, it's interesting, and I hope uh, I hope it will work out, and I hope people like, can either one understand my uh, accent, and then the uh, other side is that they don't find me too irritating. Things Man, that talk about, so. listen, Spence, don't worry about that, bro. If they can understand my fucking broken English, you know my fucking. Uh, you know, uh, the Cuban uh, refugee fucking accent, then don't worry, bro. They, they'll definitely understand your your perfect uh, British accent. Uh, because, uh, by the way, that's where you're from, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I'm from the UK and I lived all over the UK and the country. So I guess I've got um, more of like a northern English accent, but at the same time, uh, it's not typical to the area. So I guess if you came to my hometown in the UK, I would you know, you know what it just reminds me. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know what it just reminded me of right now. You remember uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights is like, you know, unlike yeah. other Robin Hoods, I speak with an English accent. You know? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, I guess it's something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, I, you know, the UK is cool. I mean, uh, I always love going back there, but I mean, uh, just like, just like you, moving away from the US. I mean, nothing's. Grass isn't always the greenest in the uh, in the places that have the uh, the most advanced uh, economy or technology and brag about all these things. You know, it's easier sometimes, and uh, you get a much more uh, fulfillment of your own life to find just a place where you can be yourself and kind of do what you want without having to, uh, you know, just uh, bend the knee to all these uh, rules and regulations of. The, uh, the mainstream kind of the hotspots, I guess, the U.S., U.K., and uh, you know, FLX. Oh yeah, for sure, bro. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, we we both get along on that front. Now, we we understand uh, the importance of our personal sovereignty and our independence and our real freedom. So that's what we choose to live. Uh, you know, for example, me, I'm living out here in Mexico. I'm an American, but I live I live out here literally just to so I can be free. You know, more than anything else, just like you chose to leave uh, the U.K. Uh, to be free as well. By the way, where are you living right now? Well, uh, if you don't mind, sh if you don't mind sharing with us where you are. Well, uh well, currently I'm in the in the UK working. I mean, I'm a I'm a contractor, like a well, it's, it, I'm not going to go too into it, but basically I do like uh, inspections on uh, 
power generation sites. But oh, cool, anyway. cool. So you're the one that you give, uh, you, you inspect um, the transformers, huh? You know, those big transformer, you know, the... Uh, it's like it's like the other side, like the side when you know when you drive past these uh, like power state, like power plants, and you see like the, all the smoke coming from the, the all the steam. Coming yeah, from, yeah. Uh, building towers and people, it's kind of funny. Like people always think, oh god, like uh, these building towers, uh, all these uh, chemicals that get pumped into the atmosphere, and people don't realize it, it's a 100 percent just just uh, what it's just steam. There's no chemicals. There's nothing in it. It's just steam. Just steam. And, uh, people think it's like uh, some bad stuff. And it's just a, it's just a bunch of hot air, like what we're fucking uh, spitting out here, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. But I am I am uh, mainly in between the UK and Latvia, which is probably most people once have said that probably have no idea where that is. And if you do, it's like bonus points because it's very it's probably one of the most quiet areas in Europe, I guess. So I wouldn't say it was. Um, bottom of the pile but uh, in uh, regards to like development and uh, the way things are going but it's certainly not uh, the worst place to be and it, it's yeah exactly the same as your um, Mexico videos where you're going around everyone's kind of just uh, doing their own thing and it's uh, it's a real eye opener to kind of be in a place where life is just a little bit slower and you kind of uh, look at how things are going and it, it, for me, it was a big eye opener to uh, realize that you have to you have to look after yourself before you kind of uh, concentrate on anything else. And you, you can do that when there's not that many distractions going around and a lot, not more like loopholes to jump through, I guess. Oh yeah, man. You know, and that's like you know, like another you know eye opening thing about you know where you're living right now because. Um, in case no one's looked it up on the map yet, you know, uh, Latvia is just like in northern Europe, uh, really close to Russia. And, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's a little bit separated from, uh, from, I guess, other populations, you know, like bigger centers and stuff. But, you know, kind of like where I'm at, you know, but that's, that's a good thing, though, you know what I mean? Because uh, you're close enough to, you know, certain places like Moscow or other parts of Europe, but at the same time, you're far enough away where you can enjoy your peace and your quiet and, and do your own little thing out here and no one's going to bother you and all that good stuff. And, 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 and on top of that, like, uh, you know, another, I'm really glad that you brought that up. You know, the fact that, um, where we know how we both live abroad and why we choose to live abroad, because, you know, a lot of people always ask me, um, about other places besides Mexico, you know, that are similar to this because not everybody wants to come to live in Mexico. Some people love the cold. Some people love the snow. And that's literally what you have every day over there. I'm in 100 degree weather and you're, you know, like with like uh, 10 feet of snow, right? Yeah, I, I mean, um, it's it's kind of in a really nice um, middle ground. The, the summers are for a European summer, I guess, north of Europe, like I guess... Um, uh, I don't know what it is exactly in Fahrenheit, but I guess uh, anywhere between 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, yeah. it, it's considered like pretty, pretty good. I mean, very good uh, summer. But um, but yeah, they can go the complete extreme. You can have like uh, then in the winter we get four or five months of uh, anywhere between zero and minus 30 degrees Celsius. So it's completely one end of the spectrum to the other. But um, but yeah, totally. It's um. It's a very unique place. It's uh, you you can't you really do have to be there to kind of understand the the way it works. Um, it does share the border with, with Russia on one side. You've got Estonia above you. You've got Lithuania down to the south, and then you've got small part of the countries with uh, Belarus. And what's really interesting is even though it's part of the EU, and in the US, I guess you can drive from east to west coast without any problems because you're free to get from one side to the other but you, you can't get into Russia without the visa you can't get into Belarus without the visa so you're kind of limited in the way you can go but there's I think uh, the last time I checked the, the total population of the country was less than two and a half million so if you most people probably listening or uh, can relate to a town that they're from they've probably got twice as many people that live there so you can understand it's such a small, it, well it's not a small country in terms of size compared to a lot of European countries but um, yeah, there's just not that many people here. And cool, in, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean I'm right now I have it on the, I'm showing everybody so I got like the Google Maps showing everybody but yeah, yeah, you're you're pretty close to 
to everything. And again, like how far? I mean, how long would it be like of a like of a plane trip from you know Latvia to the king, the United Kingdom, like an hour or something like that? No, I I, uh, I take regular flights back and forth, and it's normally it's two hours. Okay, okay, yeah, so two hours. Okay. So, so yeah, but um, I mean that's kind of the, the European lifestyle. I guess everybody's taking flights, and uh, it's really uh, yeah, yeah, back and forward. Yeah. That's so yeah, cool, though. That's really yeah, cool yeah, that you're so I close mean, to Moscow, you know, I like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's super interesting with the way, obviously, with, with the whole history of World War One, World War Two, and all the different, um, it, it, it's kind of in that middle ground where you've got Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine, all these ex-Soviet um, Union countries, which are kind of caught in the middle of the East League, where it was, the, you know, old school Nazi Germany and the Allies and the USSR and you know, everyone's, it's this complete middle band of Europe where uh, it's just destroyed communities and families and uh, that's why there's just not that many people that live there because they're either, they've moved away to like flee and there's a lot of black in America, a lot of black in the United Kingdom and uh, yeah, just uh, a lot of the people in Latvia are actually Russians. I think the last time I checked it was about 40% of Latvian citizens were actually um, uh, Russians who just identify as like Latvian citizens. So. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, all that, Georgia, you know, all that, the whole area right there was all part of Russia at one point. Mm-hmm. And Moldova, Romania, you know, all that, Bulgaria, right? No, not Bulgaria. Was it Bulgaria? Or? No, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But uh, but still, like all these areas, you know what I mean? Like oh, for sure. And um, and yeah, I mean, I, I used to date a girl from Moldova, you know what I mean? Like back when I was in Seattle and everything. And uh, and uh, it's just really interesting, though, um, how all these places, like, for example, like all these places now, because um, like everything from like Spain to Portugal, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, you know, just r- regular Europe is all part of the EU and, you know, the UN, you know, I mean, right, the EU, I'm sorry, the EU. And uh, and they're trying to get some of these countries, you know, I don't know if Latvia is part of the EU or not, but, you know, some of these other countries that are bordering Russia, right, to be part of the the EU, so they can go up against. Am I is the EU? I mean, I'm, I'm I'm thinking more like the UN, right? No, not the UN. Is it? No, there's, there's there's the EU, which is like it's more really I think focused on like trade dealership and things. So Latvia are in the EU. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, uh, well, but but I guess I mean I, I know yeah the European Union, the EU, you know yeah we talk about that shit all the time. The Euro, you know, but yeah. I, but what I guess what I was trying to because I don't know if it's a UN or is it something else. I'm kind of like spacing out. I think it's the blunt, but you know what I mean, like the military. Um, the military yeah, it's union. A, it's a NATO. NATO, NATO. That's right. That's what it is. Yeah. So like all, all of these countries in Europe are all part of NATO, and uh, Moscow. You know, Russia has been trying to get part of NATO, but they don't want to include Russia into NATO. And so what they're doing is that they're getting you know all these countries like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. You know, all these countries like to be part of NATO and to be pointing their missiles at Russia. And, and that whole fucking deal. And that's why, like, Russia was trying to get into NATO, but NATO doesn't want them in there because, you know, like, again, like, if you know a little bit of the history or anyone out there knows a little bit of the history of that, you know, NATO was literally put into place to go up against, you know, Russia and the communist regime or the evil, you know, the evil shit from the West or the East or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really, um, there's a lot of different dynamics with the whole uh, populations because obviously a lot of Russian families moved into these countries during the USSR and then when it got abolished it's kind of like almost a 50-50 split of Russian and native whether it is uh, you know Belarus or Latvia uh, and um, there, there's towns in Latvia which are 90% plus uh, Russian citizens out of there even though they're in Latvia and it's really scary because um, Obviously, these people they they want to be part of Russia, you know. So and it's the Latvian people and the Latvian government really don't have the kind of uh, the forefront and the power to kind of uh, steer it back into them because they just the people that live there think you know you just want to join the biggest team, you want to be on the winning side. You right. Know? And these people are seeing all these different things happening, and it, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, I remember being. In, in Riga at the time when uh, the whole uh, Crimea uh, Ukraine thing was happening. Well, you were and, you uh, were down there. You were in, in, in the, you were literally down there in the in, the, in that area. Well, no, no, no. Oh. I, I was I was in Latvia, but oh, Riga, Riga. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the the capital. Yeah, so it was a big, <laughs> it was a big um, 
big thing when the whole Crimea thing was happening because literally the same exact thing would happen to any of these uh, ex Soviet Union states. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and when I was in uh, Riga at the time, uh, it was on all the Latvian news, and I was getting messages from people back home in the UK asking if everything was okay because the news that was coming into the UK was basically saying that. Russia were on the border, ready to invade imminently, and you know because of all this pressure with a lot of different things going on, the US were involved, and I know there is a big um, involvement with. I think I'm not like 100% sure on all this, and it's not something which uh, I've read too much into, but I know that it's in the um, like declaration or whatever they have with uh, Russia that the US can't based any um, troops along. The uh, Russian border because obviously it create a lot of like animosity between the two. Yeah, but they're still but, doing that though. Regardless, you know, even though yeah, that that does... they, they, they are doing it. I mean, um, yeah. I'm, I'm like maybe an hour's drive from Riga, and uh, when I first lived, I, I moved there five years ago, and the first three years it was regular, weekly. You would drive to the capital just to go shopping or just to see something, see you know anything. You would be passing all these military vehicles all the US. But they, they're there all the time, but they just tell them that and they're doing military training. Hmm. But really, they're just, you know, they're, they're just sitting there waiting for something. Oh yeah, for sure. And like you know, let I mean you know now that we're kind of like on that subject, you know, like I want to like uh, talk about Ukraine for a minute and Crimea, you know, just so people can get some context into exactly what the hell we're talking about. Because again, like like how you said right now, you know, Latvia, you know, the people of Latvia, you know, you would hear on the news like, oh my God, the you know Russia and the Moscow and these people are coming over and they're gonna take us over. Um, and you know, let me why because the the media there, you know, being run by the EU and being run by that agenda, you know, they want to keep Latvia in the EU and they want to keep Latvia on this side, you know, and, and they don't want, they don't want it, they don't want them, they don't want Lat the Latvian people to secede into Russia because believe it or not, again, what happened in Crimea was that Crimea seceded into Russia. It wasn't that, you know, Russia came in and took over Crimea. And by the way, Crimea is this little area down here. Do you see this? I, I'm just kind of pointing to people on the map. So this is Ukraine. And then this area down here is Crimea. We're going to zoom in, in in one second. But just to give some context into all this. So, you know, you know, the Ukraine used to belong to Mother Russia, you know, like back in the USSR days. And then after the Russia, you know, became, you know, after the USSR stopped being that and it became Russia um, back in what, two, like late 90s, right? Or early 90s? around then um when that was happening well ukraine broke off ukraine stopped being part of the ussr and ukraine became its own thing um but for example when i grew up when i was growing up you know kiev you know was part of russia and now kiev is the capital of ukraine so the ukraine obviously they, they eventually sided with the eu and they became part of europe more European than, than anything else. And um, this area down, but again, like um, half of uh, the Ukraine, as you guys can see, you see half, as I'm moving the mouse up and down where the, where the literally where the name of Ukraine is, you'll see that, you know, um, it, it's kind of like divided in half. So half, you know, is kind of like, like how uh, Spence was saying with Latvia, where there's like 40 to 50% or more um, of the population is very sympathetic to Russia and they're Russian. And then the other half, you know, the part over here with Moldova, close to Romania, Poland, and shit like that, they're more European. And they, they side more with, uh, you know, they just want to be sovereign, and they want to be Ukraine, and they want to be part of uh, Europe. And so, and that and that stuff. And so, now when we come down here to this area here, which is the U, which is Crimea, you know, this whole area over here, this is the Crimean Peninsula. You see, we're going to be zooming in here. You see, this is very, very important. And so... You know, this area, again, let me zoom out just real quick. When I zoom out, you'll see that this part, this kind of falls into the part of Russia. Look, all this is Russia, 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 you know what I mean? All this is Russia. So, like, this area right here, even though it belongs to Ukraine, like, they, they, they were all, like, all this area here is, like, sympathetic with Russia, same as Crimea. So, now, well, I mean, what happened a few years ago, when what Spence was talking about, like, five years ago or whatever, was that they took a vote down here in this area. Uh, to see who they wanted to be with if they wanted to be with the ukraine if they wanted to remain in the ukraine or if they wanted to secede into russia and so after the vote um they were like 90 percent overwhelming that they wanted to be with russia and now that's why you see this border here 
that before this border was not here, you know, but now because, you know, again, this area down here used to belong to Ukraine, but now there's a border here because now this all this area now belongs to Russia. And so why did the Russia want this area? Because it's a very important port. It's it's it's, a, it's the only like uh, it's the only like um, way in which Russia here. Now, let's zoom out real quick. And you see Russia has like a like a port in this little area here. And like, even though you might not be able to see it, like Moscow can now like literally, you know, have a train or have like a trade route all the way down to the Black Sea. They got to go through here. They got to go through Crimea, the Crimean Strait. They go through the Black Sea. Um, oh, hold on. Then they go through Istanbul. They go through right here, the Mediterranean. And eventually they go out to the Atlantic Ocean. And this is why, by the way, by the this is why the, the media where you guys were talking is... Um, you know, Latvia, you know, in this area up here, you know, Russia wants to, you know, wants to remain like, for example, Russia right here where, where Lithuania, like um, where, where this ocean is, you know, they would want, they would love for, for Latvia to be part of Russia because then all of a sudden they have a direct route to Riga and, uh, and yeah. then they have the Riga, the port at Riga where they can now all of a sudden, you know, be, you know, in, uh, in the, at the Baltic Sea and then, you know, uh, straight into the Atlantic Ocean. So this is why all these are very strategic, why Europe wants to keep these away from Russia and why Russia wants them. And, you know, there's all these seats. And then now all of a sudden Russia, since they, they've always been in the north, let's just, uh, by the way, I'll, I'll shut up in two seconds. But, you know, like, um, you know, Russia, like every, all because of global warming, um, all of a sudden, like all these trade routes have been opening up in the Arctic Ocean. And now Russia has been, you know, taken over in a, in a sense of uh of like all the trade routes in the in the Arctic Ocean, so you know there's all these things that are going on that most people don't even know or talk about. But you know it, it's funny that you know it's really interesting that you're right there in Latvia, right in like kind of like the center of uh, of all that shit. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years, you know, Latvia does eventually become part of Russia, especially if shit starts going down in Venezuela and other parts of the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, from from being there for so long and. Uh, I mean, uh, that would be my worst nightmare. I really wouldn't like that to happen because I just love the country so much and the people there, the, the Latvian native people have such a rich culture. It's just been very unfortunate of their geographic location and what's happened to them throughout history. And it would be a shame for they. I mean, the, the language itself isn't a widespread language and it's not getting any bigger and the population are only leaving Latvia to find better work just like everyone else has found it. Now, it's popular to leave your, where you're from and find a better uh, well, let, let me let me throw let me throw something real quick at you. You know, just a thought because to me, like obviously Latvia is on its own, even though they're part of the EU and Europe, but they're kind of like a little bit on their own. If all of a sudden, like they would they would be assimilated by um, by Russia, and especially now having a direct route, a direct trade route through the whole country, and and having all this action going on at the ports which they never had before. I mean, don't you think that maybe Latvia would you know uh, probably you know, benefit from, uh, from, you know, having Russia come in, you, you know what I mean? Um, and the Latvia will still be Latvia, you know, like Russia's not going to come in and change anything except, you know, they're just going to, you know, imp you know, build the infrastructure, I would think. I mean, just from what they've done in other parts already. I think it, it's, um, it all comes down to, um, just, it, there's a lot of different factors. I mean, the, the older population is still very, you've got to kind of take it from that perspective even though like the, the USSR and everything was like terrible and the things that happened was absolutely terrible the people at the time when they were you know when they were in their younger years and the country looked it, everything looked like it was thriving they were building new apartments everything was getting built up and then for that to be for, to go away from that and then now they're part of the EU where nothing new is getting built and things are just the old things are still there, but they're not getting uh, updated. And everything's just degrading slowly, and the people are just, it's breaking people down slowly, and they're kind of, I would, they're not giving up, but it's its not giving the right impression of independence. It's kind of like, um, it's making that there's not, not enough infrastructure in place for them to look after themselves that's why they're relying on the eu and if they weren't in the eu it, it, this all this could have happened earlier and i mean uh, 
it's one of the only places in Europe and a lot of these countries where you can still go there. There's a lot of history that's still there, still standing un, un, uh, unchecked, un, uh, you know, hasn't been knocked down, hasn't been renovated. It's just exactly the same it was from 1940 to 1945. And it's absolutely, uh, if you're reading the history, I cannot recommend anything else than to uh, definitely uh, check out all these uh, Baltic regions and yeah. anything uh, around that part of Europe is it's just uh, fascinating. The, uh, the flash, you can kind of just step into a time of some of these countries where uh, uh, these things are still, still going on. And I mean, I've been, uh, I've tried to explore the country as much as possible, but there's still big areas of, of forest where you can go in and still uh, people are digging up uh, all of World War II. Uh, memorabilia which is just in in the open fields which no one's uh, uh, discovered there. people are moving into houses old houses and renovating them and uh, digging up the foundations and finding these uh, uh, it's literally like treasure hunting like you can imagine from some kind of movie someone up in a big chest full of gold like people were burying all their belongings like all the precious metals and everything leaving the country but then because it went on that long, they, they, they died and they never came back. And there's just all these different little pockets of wow. history, which are, uh, recently the town I was in, um, they're renovating the big church there and they just uh, uh, renovated one of the spires and they found like a time capsule from like the 19, I think it was like from the 1940s or something like that, where it was uh, basically like a, a tin, uh, what you'd keep something like um, like rations in or something like that and it had like um, some some bullets and some uh, other, lots of like different things in it and these things are still coming up you know and it's it's really uh, mind blowing that it's still today it's undiscovered it's completely uh, it, it's finding its own thing but the whole when you, when you touched upon the Russian influence on the country it's it's, it's a scary time there for a lot of people because recently they didn't select a, uh, uh, well not a president, it's a prime minister, like a Russian, a pro-Russian prime minister, mm. and because the country is so heavily divided, they're almost 50-50 wow. Russian slash Latvian. The Latvian people are really worried now because there's a pro-Russian guy in charge, but obviously I don't think it'll be that much of a knock on effect because I think... Uh, if, it, if things are that bad, he won't last that long. But at the same time, it's it, it's scary, and it, it could just happen overnight. And, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, no, for sure, man. Listen, I'm telling you, man, the whole thing with the Baltic states, you know, which is Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, um, you know, they're, they're, I mean, it's never in the news. People don't ever talk about it. It's like, it's not a thing, but it's, it's like such an important part of the world that, you know, uh, that is being fought over right now, literally by Russia and the U.S., you know, by, you you know, American interest and the Russian interest. And it's, uh, it's pretty crazy to get, you know, it's pretty awesome, you know, to get your perspective on it because, uh, you know, I, I don't even need, I, I mean, I've known you for a while and I, I never even thought about fucking asking you about this shit, you know, mm-hmm. which is, I'm great we're having this conversation, but, but yeah, man, you know, shit could literally, just like it happened in Crimea, which was like over fucking night, and the same thing could happen in Latvia type of stuff, and, um, and for example, like, what, what happened in, uh, in Crimea, you know, we get two, two, only two stories, you know, we get the American story, you know, or the, the you know, that story, that uh, propaganda, which says that, oh, Russia came in there and they took over. You know, military style. They just fucking, it was a seize and they just fucking took it over. And then you get like the other, you know, propaganda, the other news, you know, coming from the Russian side of things, you know, saying like, oh no, it was elections and everything was 1000% fair and everybody wanted to join and blah, blah, blah. But there's no real perspective from the Crimea perspective from the people in Crimea so you know now that you're going through something very similar in Latvia you know and and you're not Latvian you know you're again you're very um non-biased you know what I mean you're on both sides of the you know aisle you're you're, you're non-biased whatever so then you know you you get to you know see and uh, and tell us about everything that's going on over there which is you know very similar and uh yeah yeah, like, for example, like, like if, like, for example, you're saying everyone's divided and all of a sudden they have elections and the elections is like 80 percent, you know, win towards one end or the other. People are going to be very skeptical. You know, maybe people outside of Latvia might not, but everyone in Latvia will be and they're going to suppress that kind of knowledge, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it's just, um, it, I think, uh, from, from my, my personal belief is that it's, it's still 
not long. It, it, 1945 isn't that long gone for me. I, I still think it's still too... 64 you know, years, bro. That's nothing. Know, That's it's, nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. So there's still a lot of these governors and people in power which are still... Their, their whole upbringing has been through the, the Russian uh, way of thinking and their, uh, like... The USSR's influence on their parents and how they were brought up, and these people, uh, even though they're Latvians or they're Russian Latvians, they don't know anything else apart from this uh, Soviet Russian kind of way. And um, le- until the new generation of Latvians, uh, you know, these millennial Latvians that come up and start getting into power, that's what we'll start seeing. Oh, yeah, it's going to take a little while, but. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's gonna—I mean—that's how the process always works. You know, that's why when you see any kind of election anywhere on the planet, they're always going for the young people, the young generation, the young, and because eventually, you know, they—they they literally outnumber the older generation uh, for obvious reasons. You know, <laughs> you know, like the old people are dying yeah. off and the young people are there. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you can obviously see that they're turning the tide, and uh, you know, just by having that guy um, in place, and you know, he, he's probably not going to do much. He's just going to be there. And, uh, you, you know what I mean? Like the, the Latvian guy, what is it? Like the prime minister that is, uh, you know, Russian or, or Russian influenced, you know, he's just going to be there as kind of like a figure and kind of like as an, uh, you know, just to get people starting to get people used to it and, uh, and get start to get people accustomed to, to what could be, you know, meaning kind of like saying like, well, you know, we side with Russia, things are not going to be any different. And if anything, they'll just be better. And that's, and then, you know, people easily, you know, fall into that. It's it, the, the one of the major points which this uh, like the prime minister was kind of pushing was he wants to only teach new stu- like the kids from a certain year or whatever his plan was he wants to stop teaching uh, kids Latvian he only wants to teach Russian because he just believes that the language is like uh, almost useless. Oh no! Kind of, I mean, it's so insulting to all these people. Of course, are, yeah. You, you know, and, it, and it's it's just unbelievable, but. You're stuck in a rock and a hard place. All the all the young millennial kids are, that are, are growing up and they're in the country and they see all this shit going on and they're not getting good money and they just want to make a better life for themselves. They they take a big risk. They they go to the UK. They go to Germany. They go all over the place just to get a better way of life because they just want to get away from it. And hmm. what leaves behind is the older generation, which are still kind of wired into this old system then it's just a big uh, roundabout of events that happens nothing really gets changed but um, I like to think that there's people like me and I've got friends there which like being there and things and I know from from people I've met in the UK which are kind of like starting to realise that you know it's nothing it's not all, all what it's cracked up to be to have uh, a really good uh, income and things if you're not going to get that standard of living. So for me, an ideal situation would be in 10 years, uh, every single year it would just be a completely, it already is a huge mix of um, different. It's really hard to um, understand it from um, a US point of view, where the entire, I mean, obviously you've got a lot of uh, Spanish speaking people, French speaking people, things, but it's, in comparison to that cluster of European countries, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, the amount of different languages and uh, different uh, cultures that are going on there. It's yeah, that, that whole idea, that whole idea of uh, getting rid of the Latvian language is fucked up, you know, because that's yeah, the, yeah. you know, and so like, but to me, to me, I, the way I look at that is just, again, because like, I, 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 I like politics, I've always been into that, it, it's like, they're, he's just, um, they're, they're, the, the agenda behind the Russian whatever is just trying to push, you know, really hard to see what will stick, and, uh, you know, they're not really worried, like, like, like you know, they're probably not, they're most likely, not, obviously, not going to pursue something like that, but they just want to see you know what the public perception is. They want to, you know, you know. It's just like uh, like what Trump does, you know, and shit like that. It's all part of the the show. It's all part of the how they do business and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you, uh, I, I just sent you a link in Discord there to one of the um, towns in Latvia, which is renowned for having a high Russian population or Russian influence. Which um, it's not a place that many Latvians go there because it's just 
it, it's almost like a different country because it, it might as well, it, it may as well just be a, a part of Russia because it's just that it's, it's kind of like an extension of Russia in Europe, so I'd say. But um, if you if you look, you can see the, the historical affiliations where from uh, 1917 it, it's been the Russian Empire, Latvian Empire, Soviet Union under Nazi control, back to the Soviet Union, then back to Latvian. It, you know. It, it's only been Latvia since 1991, so uh, you know it's it's really yeah demographics. Uh, yeah, I see that it's like 50 53 percent Russian. Wow. It's, all these there's all these little towns all over the place which are just just like this. So, but when when where I am from my perspective is that uh, they are making a lot of changes. Things are getting better, and uh, I've been there five years. And I can already see the difference, and it'll be a slow slow process and it might not be fun for all the people that are working uh, working super hard and paying super taxes to try and get things turned around but um, yeah the, it's definitely picking up there so it's a, it's a little bit of hope that everything's on the right track but uh, uh, I, I'd like to hope to see that things would definitely um, be twice if not three times better than it is today but um, I, I think it's heading that direction slowly I just it it's worrying for me to see that, in, you know, history doesn't often, you know, repeat itself, but it, you know, it rhymes with what was happening yeah. before, and it's just one of these places in between a lot of um, powerhouses, which it, it could easily, like, um, you could easily imagine another entry at the end of this, like, Wikipedia article where it's just another nation, yeah. just, and then it would be Latvia again in another 50 years, so. No, I mean, for, um, right now, like, as you're talking, I'm showing drone shots of Latvia and stuff, and uh, and it's just, you know, just so people can get, like, wrap their heads around this stuff, you know, as to, like, yeah, this country is just in danger, just like in Venezuela, just like all, the, all these other places, you know, like uh, Syria, just like all these other spots, you know, Crimea, you name it. Um, you I know, mean, this could yeah, be a hot it, spot, it, it, you know. Um, hopefully it yeah. isn't. Hopefully it isn't, but... No, no, it's, it's, it's definitely not um, as in... Uh, immediate danger is these kind of places where things are really going wrong and things really yeah, but, really do have to stand up for. You know, but yeah, those it, things took years, you know, those things took years yeah. to get to that point, you know, just like, you know, things could happen, you know, again, it's not like it's going to happen here, I don't think, you know, uh, but it could because a lot of these things that we are talking about are real serious things that, again, I, I you know, you're 100%, you know what I mean? Like, um, they could overnight change and, uh, and hopefully they go like they did in Crimea and everything's fine and dandy, you know, no problem, but, you know, things could go wrong, you know, like, uh, but I, I think that you're more, you're not in danger of anything really going wrong, you know, I think that, you know, things are okay with the fact that, you know, the, I don't know, I, I just think that, I, I know you guys might not, as a Latvian per se, might not want to be part of uh, Mother Russia, but I don't know, man, you know, the way things are going right now, I, I, I you know, just uh, to kind of like to sidetrack the conversation for a second, I would, I would definitely be... I don't know. I would be more confident in siding with Russia and their economic uh, situation as opposed yeah, to Europe for, uh, and for their for economic, economic situation. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, just, just saying that, you know, from that point, you know, but, but I understand from the cultural standpoint, it's terrible. You know what I mean? It's terrible. Mm -hmm. But, but again, you know, remember, you know, they were, they were all, they were literally part of Russia 20 years ago, you know, so it's not like 25 yeah. years ago or something like that. You know, yeah. so it's not like, uh, a, lot, a lot of, a lot of my friends were, were born in, what was Soviet Russia, and even though they were maybe on uh, fourth, you know, between the ages of one and six years old, when uh, it, it was, it become Latvia again. Uh, it's still a, it's it's not that long ago, and people, uh, you know, people don't realize it's like um, how quickly things can change, even though yeah. it might not have happened in their lifestyle. Yeah, the equivalent of like what's going on there is like if like let's say that you know the USA goes through some crazy shit. And then all of a sudden, like, California goes and becomes its own country. A few, you know, Texas becomes its own country, whatever. And then now, like, 25 years down the line, you know, the U.S. is kind of, like, you know, back in shape. And they're trying to get California to be back part of Russia, you know, part of the U.S. And California's like, nah-uh, we're good, you know? We don't want none of that. You know, but most people, they're, you know, most people in California are, um, they were born into, they were born in America. And uh, not necessarily, you know, other people that are younger, you know, 25 years or below, who were born as Californians, you know? And that kind of shit, you know, so it's the same thing was going on with, you know, Latvia, you know, and that kind of, just to give, you know, 
like a roundabout perspective on how what what all this really is and means and and uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of like um, like an American state which would kind of have a similar um, uh, like a land area like a, a coverage, but then we could just compare like the populations because I'm sure um, yeah, probably like Delaware, Connecticut, or some shit like that. I don't know. I guess what well, what's the um, what's the smallest state in America? Rhode Island. Well, I'm going to have to quickly... Uh, yeah, Rhode Island is small. Too small, though. But, yeah, but I mean... But, yeah, but, like, you know, just somewhere on the East Coast, one of those uh, places, you know, that's what Latvia... Latvia would probably be, like, New Hampshire, you know, Maine, some shit like that. You know what I mean? Something on the... You know, just like a... Maybe more like Maine, you know, like a big land mass with, like, not much population. Um, but with important ports and shit like that. So, yeah, you know... Um, but it's just something like that, you know, that that's what Latvia would be, you know, like if Latvia, you know, the U.S. would, remember, there's a lot of people out there talk all this conspiracy stuff, you know, meaning that when the U.S. falls, that a lot of these states are going to split off and become their own countries, just like the USSR, you know, just like happened back in, you know, those times, and, uh, and then again, you know, we got to, but, you know, we're just thinking like 40, 50, 60 years down the line, you know, of these things happening. And then, you know, eventually, you know, Maine splits off. And then now, you know, we're at a point where Maine is trying to, I mean, the U.S. is trying to be, you know, get Maine back into the union. I mean, just to give some perspective around this, but, but yeah, at the end of the day, just going back to the fucking map, you know, um, again, you know, all these places, you know, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Georgia, you know, um, I think Uzbekistan, um, you know, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all these places, you know, belong to Russia. And like if you, Kazakhstan, you know, down here in the, in the southern part of Russia, I mean, in the southern part of Kazakhstan, you're going to find Borat. But in the northern part of Kazakhstan, you're going to fucking find, you know, just a regular Russian, you know, blue eyes, blonde, you know, the whole fucking night. So, yeah, man, just to put some perspective on and all this shit right here. Um, where we're at, and then you look how close we are to like you know um, middle the Middle East and all that stuff. But anyways, yeah, it's a, but yeah very interesting. But um, I, I'll just say one like one more thing before we move on to something else. But um, yeah, like uh, a lot many people really know about it, but it's really um, a celebrated thing in across the whole three Baltic states. Is, uh, I think it was, I'm not 100% sure about what the year was, but it was, oh yeah, it was um, 89, where basically everyone from Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, they all went to the um, border, uh, the Russian border, or what was the, um, uh, they, they basically picked a road from, that went through every capital city of the three uh, countries, from the bottom to the top, and it was a, a link of people all holding hands, and it was a, a, a whole line of people who went across completely three countries just to protest against uh, the, um, you know, the uh, Russian influence. And then they got their independence back just by basically uh, uniting together and standing up. And it was, it's just such a huge thing that, like, um, all the people had the balls to kind of do that and to have that many people stood in one line that went across almost the like, you know, such a massive amount of space. Yeah, man. From Estonia all the way down to where? To Belarus. Well, yeah, to the bottom of Lithuania, uh, Belarus. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm looking at it. Yeah, like as you're saying, like I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in on the map so people can get an idea. Yeah, I just sent you the link there. But, uh, yeah. yeah, the human chair. Yeah, so, yeah, about... Uh, oh, that's what that... Okay, yeah, because I clicked on the link too. Okay, yeah, we're going that. Yeah. Okay, so that's the human chair. There you go. Okay, got it. Wow. But yeah, that's definitely um, interesting. If people want to read up that, uh, they'd be surprised because it's not something a lot of people know about. Hey, yeah, I'm putting it there so people can see it, so people can look but it yeah, up. Uh, yeah, it's another thing. I mean, my um, my locals in the town, really nice, quiet town, and uh, you can go to the... Uh, the like, they've still got all the, the castles there and things cool. like that. They've still got a lot of history there. And, They've still got like the uh, statues of Lenin in boxes, like yeah. in the corner. You know, they yeah. they're not they're not up anymore, but they're still there. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this area is cool as fuck. I mean, see, look how close you are to St. Petersburg. I don't, I don't even know that St. Yeah. Petersburg was right there. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. And like, uh, yeah, because like I follow a YouTuber that he lives in St. Petersburg, and it's fucking cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. But yeah, look how close. Uh, 
Look how, look how close St. Petersburg and Moscow are to the, all this area. Moscow is the capital. And just so you guys can get an idea, but, you know, back in the day, um, look up, look how, you know, again, all this area belonged to Russia, you know, all this area from Estonia to Latvia, you know, all this shit belonged to Russia, so they, like, you know, the capital was even more inland, you know, now the capital of Russia is, like, so on the border, you know what I mean, like, it's exposed, mm-hmm. and shit like that, yeah. it's crazy, it's cool, man, really yeah. cool to talk about this area, and then, uh, talk about the history and all this shit, it was a really, really awesome conversation we had today, man, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not. Yeah, it's it's um it's kind of one of those things. That even even when I'm in in Latvia and talking to a few people, uh, the people there, like the the young people there, don't really know much about the history, even though they they do know of it and get taught about it in the schools and things. But I mean, uh, in comparison now, I, I don't really know that much English history compared to Latvian history, just because obviously I moved there. And you kind of want to get a bit more perspective of where you are and what's been going on, I guess. Well, yeah, man. But anyways, uh, I guess, uh, well, do we have any more parting words before we end this? I mean, I think we had a, we uh, we kicked ass for our first uh, attempt at this thing, huh? How was it? Did yeah, you have fun? Uh, See, it was pretty easy, man. I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot, a lot easier than, um, you know, it was, uh, yeah. it was good to kind of uh, just talk about some uh, interesting stuff that I know that you're interested in as well, and hopefully some other people found it interesting too so that's all good yeah man for sure bro so um i guess we're about to sign off here you know um spence again do you have any just last words or do you just want to say goodbye or whatever um well obviously if anyone wants to hear any more just make sure you uh leave a comment or something like that or join the discord the joseph discord and find me in there and i'll always respond to anyone that wants to talk about anything uh black beer or anything else related and uh and yeah, hopefully we'll do another one soon. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. You know, uh, it was awesome. I, it, it, I, I'm not going to lie. It came out way better than what I thought, <laughs> right? You know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. so I we mean, had a really good time. We were going to talk about, but um, it was kind of nice to um, go from an introduction and kind of uh, hopefully uh, give some people some insight of uh, places that aren't just in the uh, in the U.S. because I know how hard it is to just get sucked into the whole uh, vacuum of, you only hear about the local kind of uh, what's going on so, yeah. yeah man for sure man you know how we do here on this channel we're just dropping knowledge all day long you know from all angles all day you know you gotta watch out you know that should have hit you on the head knock you out <laughs> but uh <laughs> but anyways <laughs> but yeah guys hey seriously thank you so much for joining us today if you want um to chat with spence one-on-one like uh like he was just saying join the discord the link is at the bottom um you already know i'm in there you know he's in there um we talk about anything and uh yeah you know we're just gonna keep this conversation alive please leave some comments below leave the likes let us know what you think about uh this uh this new little program thingy we're trying to do you know hopefully we'll see if we can do one a week you know just depending on uh on our availability and uh and all that good stuff and uh i mean i had fun uh how about you did you have fun yeah it was great yeah Fuck i you. think uh, we'll definitely have a lot more fun future with it fuck yeah man so you know we're definitely gonna keep doing these because we had fun and uh hopefully you guys had fun and uh and like that's it you know so let me just go through the thing uh, don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit that bell icon please leave some comments all right like let us know what you think and uh i guess uh we'll see you next time peace out guys thanks again for joining yeah. us today bye